awesome open video. Wow. That was so cute. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the virtual open house for the University of Saskatchewan uh, from wherever you are joining. Uh, Amy and I will be your virtual tour guides through this business and economics in the bioeconomy with agribusiness graduates. So I will start by introducing myself. Uh, so mm -hmm. As you can see, my name is Dylan Stang. I grew up on a, on a family farm just outside of Macklin, Saskatchewan. Uh, and much like you today, I was uh, sitting in the same position about five years ago when I attended the, the open house. And I had questions and, and inquiries about um, how, how the university experience would go. I, I wasn't exactly sure what path I was going to go down, but after the open house, it had solidified for me that... Uh, the University of Saskatchewan and the agribusiness program are right for me. So uh, I did convocate in 2016, or sorry, 2021, with my uh, major in agribusiness and minor in agronomy. And uh, yeah, um, I ha hadn't seen myself as, as um, where I am today, uh, five years ago. But um, all I know was I had an interest in agriculture and I had an interest in business and economics and I married those two ideas and I chose the agribusiness path. So without further ado, I'll allow Amy to introduce herself as well. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining today. Um, my name is Amy Carruthers and I graduated uh, in 20, I guess I should, I guess I should step back. I'm from a farm um, in uh, a little north of Dillon near Paradise Hill, Saskatchewan. Um, and I started university in 2016 at the U of S and in 2020, I graduated with a degree in agribusiness and also a minor in agronomy like Dylan. And I am now in my second year of an agriculture economics master's degree. And yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about the agribusiness program and the student experience as well. So I invite you all to ask any questions in the chat as Dylan and I are talking this morning or this afternoon, and uh, we'll answer your questions afterward. So I'll pass it back over to Dylan to talk a little bit about academics and uh, yeah. Okay, my apologies. I was experiencing connectivity issues. Hopefully I'm coming through clear now. Uh, Amy, just uh, let me know if I'm not. Um, so uh, to get into what we'll discuss, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll start by discussing the academics like Amy said. So. I'll try to cover some of my favorite classes and, and my favorite projects. So in in my first year, first term, uh, of course, the, the, the courses are very broad, um, but some of my favorite courses were Agriculture 111, that's the first year introductory agriculture course, and, and economics. And I hadn't taken an economics course in high school, but um, that the, my economics course alongside my agriculture course kind of solidified for me that the agribusiness program was right for me. And uh, I really knew I was in the right program when I uh, walked in on the first day into my sociology lecture. Um, it, it was an elective course that I had chosen uh, just because I thought it sounded cool and I was somewhat interested in it. Um, uh, I walked in and I sat beside, uh, I just sat somewhere um, beside someone. There weren't many open seats and I introduced myself to the people around me. And it just so happened that the fellow sitting beside me was also in agriculture. And we bonded over how much we, we, we didn't like the class all term and we lived for the, for the uh, class when we were together in Agriculture 111. Um, then when it came to, the, to the, my second year, I started taking um, more courses that were getting more so applied where you have um, agricultural economics courses. Some of the courses uh, I took that have been particularly helpful are agribusiness tax taxation and uh, agribusiness uh, um, financial management. And those two courses combined have actually given me uh, an exceptional understanding of, of um, just how big uh, a farming operation is just and, and what it takes to manage a farming business. In actually in the last year, I started doing the bookkeeping for my family farm. It's been a it's been a huge learning curve, but without that base knowledge gained through through those courses in agricultural economics and financial management, I definitely would not see myself in this position where I am. Um, and I guess one one more course highlight uh, would would be the agribusiness capstone course, agribusiness venture management. I took that one last year, last term, and 
um, that course is a project-based course where um, we choose an agricultural product or service and we build a business plan uh, around it and, and business plan sort of takes up the whole term. Our, our group ended up designing uh, an app, I guess not designing an app, but building a business plan for an app that when you go grocery shopping, you scan it at the till and as, as the groceries are being scanned, the groceries would populate in your app. So the app would know what groceries you have and and would be able to make meal recommendations based off what you have at home. So we had a lot of fun um, with, with that idea and just building the business plan around it. Uh, and I'll uh, pass it over to Amy to discuss uh, her, her side of the academics. Yeah, wow, that's a neat app. I, I kind of wish I had that available to me. Um, academics for me, I think Dylan highlighted some classes, some key classes, I guess, in the program. And I want to talk a little bit about learning communities, um, which is an opportunity as if you're thinking about coming to USASC and, and taking the agribusiness program. Learning communities are a really great opportunity uh, to meet other students, as well as to get in, um, to make the registration process a little easier because a learning community will put you in three classes that you need first semester. And it will put you in these classes with other peers who are also in the agribusiness program. And then you will meet once a week with these peers and um, you'll have learning community, community leaders who are a couple of years older or in a couple of years um, into their program. And, and you just get to meet other students and, and go through kind of those class experiences together. So I think that's a really neat academic tool for students and, uh, I know I, my closest friends right now, I met in my learning community um, in my first week of school. So that it has been really influ influential for me and I think it's a great tool um, for students to kind of be aware of. I found the agribusiness program to be super um, versatile. I was able to take courses that um, allowed me to learn about business management and farm business management, as well as take some courses through Edwards and kind of see the strict business side of things, um, learn about accounting, and then and then was able to diversify into some agronomic knowledge in um, a field crop production minor. So I think it's it's a really great program, and um, there's lots of avenues uh, job wise that you can take with this degree. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about student life because I know student life is a huge part of the next four years of your life. And that's something you kind of want to be confident about when you decide where you're going to go. Um, and the College of Egg Bio has a really great student life. Uh, some of the clubs that I was in were the Beef Club as well as the Range Team. Um, and these two clubs allowed me to get some hands on experience um, as well as learn from um, people in the industry. Um, for example, the beef club or the beef team allowed me um, to take an artificial insemination course and learn how to AI. And so now my sister and I um, both do a lot of AIing on our own farm. And then the range team is um, a team where you can uh, learn about rangeland health and plant identification. And through that club, I was also able to travel to Denver and, and compete in a conference there. So there's really great student clubs and as well as the, the ASA, which I'm gonna pass it back over to Dylan to talk a little bit more about that. Thanks, Amy. And yeah, there, there's uh, definitely some great opportunities with the clubs for academic enrichment and even even travel opportunities, like you've mentioned. Um, and yeah, when, when it comes to the ASA, the Agricultural Students Association, um, the Agricultural Students Association does their best to to support students um, in with the student life, with with social events, with 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 sporting activities, and and just with um, I guess bu building building a sense of, of community and uh, make making yourself feel like you can call yourself one of us, call yourself an agro. We at the University of Saskatchewan we call ourselves agros. I know elsewhere they call themselves aggies, but uh, here at the University of Saskatchewan we are agros. Um, so uh, basically, what the ASA does out, out um, more more specifically is um, in regard to the campus rec sports. We line up uh, uh, teams at the start of the year for individuals to sign up. You can sign up with maybe a, a few friends you made on the first day of, of first few days of classes, 
and uh, you'll have a few weeks to, to sign up for rec sports. And in my time, I, I played every rec sport from hockey to soccer, football to slow pitch. And these are some of these are sports I never played in high school, uh, especially inner tube water polo, which I had never heard of until the day I was actually asked to play. <laughs> and uh, when some of the other uh, things the ASA does is they is um, in res with respect to the social activities is putting on um, um, sporting tournaments like slow pitch tournaments and we have the winter mixer hockey tournament and dance. Um, the ASA also tries to incorporate um, fundraising activities into each one of these social activities. So um, depending on on the year, uh, we will. Uh, in, during the month of February and March, we will usually fundraise for Telemiracle. We will do our bed for, push for Telemiracle, which you may have heard of before. And uh, the bed push is basically where we push a bed frame on bicycle wheels uh, d down the highway from Saskatoon to Regina over the course of the weekend just to make it in time for the airing, the live airing of te Telemiracle. And uh, in the last year, we did the bed push. We do it every other year. Um, when, when Telemiracle is in Regina and we end up raising over $55,000. And um, when, in the off years when we aren't doing the bed push for Telemiracle, we're fundraising for STARS. And I had the pleasure of, of fundraising for STARS, taking the lead on that as the public relations officer for the ASA. And uh, last year, in spite of COVID, we were still able to do some social activities. We did a drive-in movie, an executive auction. And, and a few other events. And we ended up raising over $15,000 for STARS um, through that. So uh, that was uh, very special to be a part of, and I highly encourage you to get involved, whether it's through clubs, sporting activities, or even with the Agricultural Students Association. It's, it's just the other half of the university experience. And uh, I'd like to pass back, or sorry, maybe I'll, I'll dive into, um, now what what i ended up doing post-grad um what i'm doing now because i didn't really discuss that when i introduced myself so uh right now i am a connectivity and digital support specialist for case new holland i know that sounds like a mouthful so basically i am technical support for the precision agricultural platforms that case ih new holland have so if you aren't familiar with the term precision agriculture um, it's very similar to what Farmer's Edge or Climate Field View does in that it is looking at agronomic data, whether it is as applied data for variable rate fertilizer, yield maps, or even satellite imagery to look at crop health uh, in order to make uh, in informed uh, farm management decisions. And um, I'm, I'm in a support role right now as an, in, as an introductory role, but within a year or two, I expect to be in a marketing or sales role for that. And I think that'll be an excellent marriage of my uh, agribusiness major and my agronomy minor being that I have, being that I am working with that agronomic data. So um, I'm looking forward to what, what the future has in store with me with this company. And uh, I'll pass it over to Amy because she has uh, some very interesting things she's up to post-grad. Yeah, I'm, I'm also going to talk a little bit about study abroad, um, which Dylan and I both had the opportunity to do. And so study abroad is a program offered through the University of Saskatchewan where you have the chance to take a semester or a term of your program in a different country. And um, this experience is just life changing, really. Like, I know that sounds cliche, but it's it's a really good experience. And you can um, apply through the University of Saskatchewan and you will work with some really awesome um, advisors to kind of help you plan what courses you would take at a different university. And the credits you earn there would transfer back to your agribusiness degree here at the U of S. So you graduate fully with a U of S degree, but some of your credits are coming from um, a different institution. And Dylan and I both had the chance to study abroad in the Netherlands. And um, some of the courses I took were about international food and agribusiness. Um, some were about circular economy. And I had a lot where we worked um, really closely with other Dutch companies, or we also worked with some companies in Africa um, to kind of come up with business plans for them or consult on some different challenges they were facing and more just as, as kind of a project. And it was just a different kind of hands-on learning that I really enjoyed. So um, the study abroad 
program. I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. It's definitely not something you would take on in your first year, but it's something to think about um, that that the U of S has a really good study abroad program and that it with the Egbert business degree, um, past students have studied abroad. So the credit units are kind of all laid out for you and you could walk into it and, and set up a meeting with an advisor and your credit unit conversion would really be laid out already. So um, that's something to keep in mind as you maybe are deciding universities and then later on deciding um, what courses to take in your in your um, later on years, as this would be kind of a thing you would do in third or fourth year. So yeah, that's a little bit about study abroad. And uh, post-grad life for me looks a lot like pre-grad life because I am still in school. Um, but my my master's program is in the same department as the agribusiness degree. And so that made it really easy for me to transition from my undergraduate degree into this graduate program. So I think that um, the facilitation there by professors and students is, is really smooth to transfer if you are interested in taking post-graduate um, studies. And after my degree, I'm, I'm still writing my thesis right now, and I'm hoping to graduate by September of 2022. And after that, uh, that's a big question mark. I'm hoping to have a job maybe in policy um, and extension. And uh, I'd love to have a job in the beef industry, but I'm currently doing my thesis on uh, irrigation in the potato industry. So who knows where I'll end up. But um, I'm really grateful that the agriculture industry sure has a lot of options um, for graduates. So yeah, I think uh, I think that was kind of everything Dylan and I wanted to talk about. Anything else, Dylan, that you want to mention? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, add a little bit to the the study abroad program. Um, I guess what one one key takeaway from the study abroad program for me was that um, I I, I was thinking that studying abroad would expose me to uh, maybe a whole new realm of, of university that I wasn't qualified for coming from just a, another university in, in the prairies in Canada, right? A, a, a university located in a, in a relatively small city when you're looking at the grand scheme of things worldwide. But uh, I quickly realized that the quality of, of education at the University of Saskatchewan, especially in the agriculture program, can compete with, uh, with some of the best in the world. And I was actually, I myself was considering master study, studies over summer, and I ended up attending a scholarship information session where there was a, a lady who was uh, discussing her experience at uh, Oxford University in, in the UK. And she, before attending Oxford, she had attended the University of Saskatchewan, and she had said something along the very, very similar lines, where um, the University of Saskatchewan's quality of education can compete with with the Ivy League schools and some of the best in the world. And and uh, when it when it when it comes to academics, and then when it comes to the student life, well, I might be biased, but uh, I I think uh, there's so much more to offer um, in in the agricultural community, and and it really is a community. And uh, I would like to invite you all to 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 join the College of Agriculture at the University of Saskatchewan and to to become an agro. And with that, I'd like to open it up for for questions. Uh, Amy, if you'd like to add anything, uh, you, you can do so. Yeah. No, I think that was a great way to, to end it off. Yeah, we'd love to answer any questions and no questions are silly. I've, I've had them all and I've said them all out loud. So please ask away if you have any questions. And if you don't feel comfortable asking aloud, feel free to put it in the chat and we will do our best to answer aloud. Yes. Maybe while we're waiting for questions to come in, uh, I'll just maybe discuss some of my uh, my career path this, thus far, because I've mentioned where I am now, but I didn't really mention much of the in-between, which some of you may be curious about. Um, so uh, during the summer, I had actually worked with uh, Synergy AG, which is a uh, independence crop input retail. And I ended up wor wor working alongside the sales team and selling uh, chemical seed and, and fertilizer to farmers. Uh, I see a question just came in here. Did you guys live in residence? Uh, no, Grace, I did not live in residence, but I will allow Amy to answer for herself. I also didn't live in residence. 
So we're not a very, uh, very good example of someone who did, I guess. Um, I, and I can't really speak to the residents experience other than from peers. And I always heard that it was, it was really fun and a great way to meet people. Yes, based on what peers have said, I, I know that they've said the same thing. It's a it's a great way to meet people. Many people will spend spend their first year in residence. They'll find that they've met uh, a lot of new people, and then they may decide to uh, they they've met three or four people that they want to move into a rental property with, perhaps after the fact. Yeah. I think another thing that we didn't really talk about was um, summer jobs. How, well, you just started talking about your, your past summer jobs. Um, but I think as, as a whole, the, the job selection for agribusiness students is really unique. Um, I know agribusiness students who are working in sales roles. And I know agribusiness students who are working in agronomy, um, field scouting type roles. And I think that that their summer experience really allowed them um, to kind of take take on an agronomy role after taking an agribusiness degree. And I think that um, there's just really great opportunities with summer jobs um, through through different businesses, but they often come to the college and talk about these summer jobs. Yeah, and when, when it comes to uh, agriculture, the, the nature of the, the business is, is very seasonal. And, and that just so happens that the time when um, a university is out in uh, at the end of April is when the growing season starts. And um, so many of the agronomy oriented and agribusiness oriented uh, summer jobs are at their peak uh, during the summer. So you really get to see a um, uh, kind of the whole the whole uh, crop growing cycle. And it looks like we had a question in the chat. Will this session be available as a recording later? later? And yes, it will be available as a recording later. Thank you for the question. And just to speak a little bit more to the opportunity, especially this day and age when we have remote working, um, I, I should highlight that my position with uh, Case New Holland is actually a remote position where I am able to um, work in on, on the farm when I want to, but I also have an office in in the city of Saskatoon, so I can I'm able to return to my family farm and help out with the seeding and harvest. Uh, with my remote work but i'm also able to uh, really dedicate myself to my job at dur during the other times of year when i want to uh attend the office so uh, there's really some nice flexibility in in some of the uh agricultural jobs that are out there today yeah i think this um this remote working is is definitely a neat concept and i don't think it's going anywhere in the near future that's for sure I am not seeing any more questions, um, and I think I, I think I've provided all the information that I can think of at the moment. Is there anything else, Dylan, that you want to talk about um, before we wrap it up? I'm I'm thinking we can give them a little bit more time if anyone wants to ask any questions. But we are getting near the two p.m. time slot. Oh, there's a question from Grace. Would you say that agribusiness would help in any ag industry? Is that, Grace, I'm thinking you mean but like any sector kind of livestock, um, agronomy? I'm thinking that's, is that how you interpret the question, Dylan? That's how I'd interpret the question, Amy. And I think you'd be okay. fantastic at speaking to that given, given your experience in both the animal sector and in the plant sector of, of agriculture. Yeah, yeah. And I think agribusiness is a really good foundation. Um, I know that there are sales companies in both the animal health industry and um, the crop production industry that are open to hiring agribusiness students. So that's why I think that this degree is so flexible. Um, you really can specialize once you graduate. You know, you can start a job in one of those fields and uh, just specialize and develop your knowledge as you um, go on in your career. So, yeah, I think I think it would be a beneficial program in any sector of the egg industry for sure. Yeah. Anything to add, Dylan? And and one thing worth noting is um, 
of course you have your major in agribusiness and there there are a couple minors i if it hasn't changed since i've attended there's uh, field crop production and agricultural entrepreneurship but that also doesn't mean that you can't uh take some say animal courses on the side animal science courses on the side or food science courses on the side to keep yourself educated in that and keep yourself open to some of the uh career paths in in those aspects of the in industry yeah that's a great point you can definitely kind of create create your own minor without the title if i'm yeah. on, i think that's yeah how i describe it Any other questions out there? We'll maybe leave it up for another 30 seconds in case there's any that are coming in, in case you guys have been listening to us so intentively that you've just been waiting for us to be quiet so you can get your question in and you have your opportunity now. Looks like there are no further questions. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for, for attending today's open house session. And uh, thank you for listening to us. Yeah, thank you everyone. And uh, hope to see you in 2022. Yes.